Early morning in the main streets of Expo. In 10 minutes, the gates will be opening. So this is Expo. The same seven days a week for six months, rain or snow, stifling heat or smog. And has it all been worth it? Hard to say. But there'll never be another like it. And at this one, New Zealand was there. And comparing... typical Sunday morning at Expo 70. The time is one minute past nine and the gates have just opened. Every day platoons of guards marshal the initial onslaught of visitors, many of whom have been queuing since six in the morning. Without the guards, the people would probably trample each other to death in the rest to be the first into the most popular pavilions, like those of the United States and Russia. It's midsummer. The temperature is in the high 90s and the humidity around 80%. Expo today will probably be visited by over 600,000 people, favorably with the rest of the world. Over 70 countries are participating. The Soviet Union has the tallest pavilion at 360 feet. Among the others are Canada, Italy, France, Australia, the Netherlands, etc., etc., etc. And what have Expo's millions of visitors come expecting to see? They've come for new experiences, for a glimpse of the future, a taste of other cultures, all under the Expo main theme of progress and harmony for mankind, in families and in organized tour groups following their leaders like schools of tropical fish. But of all the millions of visitors, only 1% are foreigners. But Expo is not really for them. It's for the Japanese. And so they come in droves to absorb the sights and sounds of the largest international exhibition held in history. Festival Plaza, the central point of Expo. Every country participating gets a chance to use it. This time it's Thailand with a 16-day elephant festival. Tug of war with an elephant, and the elephant wins. Adult entry to Expo costs $2 New Zealand. 
Still, hundreds of thousands of people roll in each day, and 800 tons of refuse rolls out each night. Every day, children are lost, pockets are picked, and people are taken ill. Three monorails skirts the perimeter of the main area. There are six trains on the circuit and they're always crowded. Expo has been described sometimes by itself as the world of tomorrow. If this is what is to come, then many of the buildings are indeed futuristic. But at Expo's conclusion, everything must come down and the site restored to its original condition. It's part of the contract. This wind sculpture comes down each time the wind exceeds five knots. It has to, or it becomes unmanageable. It undulates outside the American pavilion. Inside the American pavilion, the main attraction is, of course, the space display. For once, everything's real, from the spacesuits to the lunar landing module, which is a duplicate of the one used in 69. But there is one item which the visitors have queued up in the heat outside for five hours to see. Something really special. Something which commands the awe and respect of a Shinto idol. five inches high and heavily guarded. Meanwhile, back in the heat of an Asian summer. door runs for six months. The New Zealand Pavilion, like all the others, provides a non-stop... If they happen to arrive at the right time, inside the pavilion entrance, visitors may be lucky enough to be given a Kiwi badge. These are keenly sought after, for such souvenirs are truly popular with the Japanese. Display area, the information counter. This is a Wellington, the capital of New Zealand. Yeah, this is right. Wellington is a capital yeah. with about so, 250,000 people. 200,000 in Auckland. And Auckland is the largest. The largest. Yeah. Over 500,000 people. It's in the University of Auckland University. There's an Auckland University. There's an Auckland University in Auckland, yes, and one also in Wellington. Not far from the pavilion, the dairy board operates a couple of shops. Here, people queue for perhaps half an hour for a New Zealand milkshake. 
They're the best at Expo, even though there is only one flavour per day. The demand is so great that the machines can never keep up. New Zealand cheeses are also popular. Some aren't. Staff take a break from the crowds whenever they can. There are 34 Japanese hostesses and 14 New Zealanders. Altogether, there are over 300 on the pavilion staff. The Commissioner General's job is 90% diplomatic. There is also a Deputy Commissioner General, two pavilion managers, a public relations officer and general office staff. In the bowels of the building, technicians keep round-the-clock checks on the running of the equipment. The geyser equipment is exceedingly temperamental. Pipes spring leaks at any hour. The VIP lounge is used primarily for diplomatic functions and receptions. It's all part of progress and harmony, and who knows, an important trade deal may be clinched here. The pavilion is designed to last for only six months. Such functions as these are small international gatherings, and administrative staff from other pavilions are always invited. After dark on the stage outside the pavilion, a program of New Zealand entertainment. The highlight is always the audience participation in Maori action songs. Things Polynesian are very popular with the Japanese. So Expo glitters on into the night, or at least until 10 p.m. The hostesses change duties at three in the afternoon, and those going off generally head for home. Expo covers 815 acres. Today isn't too crowded, but one day it was known to have one quarter of the population of New Zealand inside its gates. When they leave the site, as show your passes, girls, the hostesses take one of the special trains which serve Expo. Japanese suburban trains are fast and frequent. Cherry Dance and Winnie Yi are both New Zealanders. In their seven months at Expo, Osaka has become almost as familiar to them as their own hometowns of Auckland and Napier. The girls live in the foreign personnel apartments at Higashi Machi, about two miles from Expo. The buildings house most of the overseas pavilion staff, but at the end of Expo, they'll naturally be filled with Japanese families. The flats are comfortable, and there's a local bar and restaurant where there's a true element of internationalism and a party every night. Here, people of all participating countries mix and make friends in a genuine intercourse of nations. Everybody meets everybody. Ethiopia, New Zealand and Canada, Algeria, Great Britain, India and France. 